Hello travelers, I'm Chris. Welcome to Lore Spire. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built Ember to be a versatile multi-role party member. With this build, Ember is a support character that provides key buffs prior to combat, burst damage at key moments during combat, and life-saving healing when it's needed most. This build is part of a full party build that will be released soon. And like all videos in this series, it is tested and approved for core difficulty or lower. You can find links to other videos in the build series down in the description along with timestamps so you can skip ahead if you like. Also, there is a build spreadsheet for quick and easy reference at the end of the video. Let's get started. At level 4, we'll take the Witch class with Ember. Put her first ability point into Dexterity. And then put two uh, skill points into mobility and one into perception. Take the protective luck curse as Ember's curse. This is a pretty helpful curse early on and has no limits to its uses. So Ember will always have something useful to do despite her weapon attacks being ineffective. Select cure moderate wounds as Ember's spell here. Ember will be acting as support for the party, so heals and buffs are what we'll focus on, especially early on. At level 5, we'll take Vivisectionist for Ember's class. This is because we need Sneak Attack to gain access to the Arcane Trickster Prestige class and the Mutagen ability that Vivisectionist gives Ember makes it the best choice to get this Sneak Attack. Now put three of Ember skill points into uh, Trickery and one into Mobility. Take the Accomplished Sneak Attacker feat. And the spells we're going to pick for Ember are Cure Light Wounds, Expeditious Retreat, Shield, and True, St and True Strike. Cure Light Wounds is probably the only one of these spells that's worth using. All of the other spells will never last more than a minute. True Strike might help if you have to land an attack and might be worth slotting in once Cure Light Wounds is too outdated to be useful. Here, on the final results page, you'll see that we are getting the Mutagen ability and Sneak Attack abilities. Sneak Attack is essential to the build and of course allows Ember to deal Additional precision damage to enemies that have lost their dexterity bonus to AC. The mutagen ability we will be using to give Ember a plus 4 alchemical bonus to dexterity and a plus 2 natural armor bonus to AC at the cost of a minus 2 penalty to wisdom. At level 6, take the stigmatized witch class and put 1 skill point into mobility Trickery, and Knowledge Arcana. Ember now meets all of the requirements for the Arcane Trickster Prestige class. Select Reduce Person as Ember's spell. This will improve Ember's AC and more importantly her dexterity so she can hit with her attacks. This spell does reduce weapon damage but will not reduce damage from the ray attacks that Ember will be focusing on. It can also be helpful to use on other party members that need their armor class increased. Now there aren't a lot of great level 2 spells for this build, so we're just going to go ahead and grab False Life that can be used uh, as a buff to help out whenever you know a tough fight is coming up. You can see here that Ember also gains Burning Arc and Scorching Ray as bonus spells. Scorching Ray will be Ember's main source of damage for this build, along with Hellfire Ray later on. At level 7, Ember will take her first level in the Arcane Trickster Prestige class, and will be sticking with this class as Ember levels until it is maxed out at level 16. Put 3 skill points into the Trickery skill and 1 into Persuasion here. Then select Spell Penetration as Ember's Feet. 
and the witch spellbook as the arcane trickster spellbook. And here we'll take heroism as ember spell. I want to point out that she gains the ranged ledger domain uh, ability here, which allows her to use trickery at a range of up to 30 feet. But doing so increases the DC of the trickery check by five. At level eight, put Ember's ability point into dexterity. And then put one skill point into trickery and two into persuasion. Take Enlarge Person, see Invisibility, and Delay Poison Communal as Ember spells for this level. At level 9, put one skill point into Trickery and the other three into Persuasion. Then choose the Metamagic Empower Spell feat. This will allow Ember to empower her Scorching Ray spell increasing its damage and making it available for use at multiple spell levels. Ember casts her spells spontaneously, which means you can use metamagic on every qualifying spell and it will be available to use if the situation calls for it. So basically, I'm just saying if you're able to put a metamagic on a spell, do it because it's only going to give you more choices. It's not going to take up extra spell slots or limit you in any way. And more choices is always a good thing. Now for the spell for this level, we're going to go ahead and take Death Ward. Um, this buff is actually really helpful and I suggest keeping it active at least on your tank at all times during dungeons. Once you have enough spell slots, keep it active on most, if not all, of your party members. And here on the final results page, we'll see that Ember gains Impromptu Sneak Attack. Uh, this ability, when activated, will allow Ember to sneak attack any enemy for one round, regardless of their awareness. The target loses their Dexterity Bonus to AC against her attacks. Ember will gain an additional use of this for every two Arcane Trickster levels she gains, which is going to give her a total of four of these uh, by Arcane Trickster level nine. This, along with the along with Empowered Scorching Ray, will allow Ember to effectively help burst down strong enemies or unexpected adds. She doesn't have enough spell casts at this point to help with spell damage, in every fight, so be sure to save uh, your strong spells and impromptu sneak attack uh, for when they matter most. Hey, do me a favor. If you're getting value from this video, please like it and then subscribe to the channel, okay? It really helps out the channel a lot, and I would be very thankful, truly, sincerely thankful, if, uh, if you could help me out with that. At level 10, one skill point will go into Trickery, one into Persuasion, and one into Perception. Okay, from here on, we'll be keeping Persuasion and Trickery maxed out, with all additional skill points going into Perception. With that being said, I'm going to stop reviewing the skill point allocation at each level. The spells for this level are going to be Bone Shaker, Remove Blindness, and Dimension Door. Bone Shaker will allow Ember to deal some damage, even if her rays are not effective. This shouldn't be necessary, but it's good to have a backup just in case. Okay, Remove Blindness. Um, will help you deal with uh, Blindness, which can be seriously debilitating. And having a spontaneous caster with remove blindness will make sure that your party can always remove it whenever it's necessary. Also, unlike remove curse or remove disease, uh, remove blindness does not have a DC check requirement to dispel the effect. And I mentioned door here real quick. I want to show a clip about this uh, where it looks like Ember is about to get destroyed by these demons. But with the Dimension Door spell, 
she is able to easily get away from danger and continue to put out damage from a safe distance. Also, Dimension Door can be useful to skip certain athletics or mobility checks, as well as to navigate some areas. At level 11, take Meta Magic, Maximize Spell for Ember's Feet, and Racking Ray for Ember's Spell. Okay, again, this Meta Magic should be put on every qualifying spell. But Maximized Scorching Ray should be the go-to level 5 spell for when you need Ember to put out significant damage. Now, Racking Ray uh, can be helpful for weakening stronger enemies. And later in the game, once Scorching Ray has reached a point where it's not penetrating enemy spell resistance all the time, um, Racking Ray may become a better choice due to its higher level, giving it more spell penetration. At level 12, put Ember's ability point into Charisma. And continue putting her skill points into Trickery, Perception, and Persuasion. Then take Glitter Dust, Cure Serious Wounds, Cure Critical Wounds, and Waves of Fatigue as Ember's spells for this level. Waves of Fatigue can be a pretty good opening spell uh, before the battle begins. At level 13, take the Greater Spell Penetration feat for Ember. And take the Gr Heroism Greater spell for Ember. Okay, now Heroism Greater is a great buff spell that you should have active on all party members as often as possible. At level 14, for Ember's spells, go ahead and take Innervation, Break Enchantment, and Hellfire Ray. And yes, I know that Ember gets Hellfire Ray from her Blackened Curse, but that's about four levels away, and we're, we are already at level 14, so we're going to go ahead and take it now so that uh, Ember's damage can go ahead and get a bump up early instead of at the very end of the game. At level 15, for Ember's Feet, go ahead and take Arcane Focus. And for Ember Spell, we're going to take the Heal spell. And here you'll notice that uh, Ember gets the Invisible Thief ability at this level, which allows her to become invisible as if under the effects of the Greater Invisibility spell as a free action. She can remain invisible for a number of rounds equal to her Arcane Trickster level. The rounds do not need to be consecutive. This ability is pretty helpful as a way for Ember to protect herself and can even help her get off sneak attacks when she needs to since uh, Greater Invisibility allows you to stay invisible even as you attack. Ember also gains Fire Snake as a bonus spell. Uh, which can be helpful against swarm type enemies. At level 16, Ember will take her final level in Arcane Trickster, put her ability point into Charisma, and take Cave of Fangs, Cure Light Wounds Mass, and Cure Moderate Wounds Mass as Ember spells for this level. Here you'll notice that Ember gains the Surprise Spells ability. Okay, this allows Ember to add sneak attack damage to all of her damage spells if the targets are flat footed. In the rare situations where a spell like Fire Snake or Bone Shaker is the better choice over Ember's Ray spells, this can add some extra damage to those spells. Also, I want to point out here that Ember now has 7 sneak attack dice from her classes and Ember will likely be Mythic Rank 6 by this level, giving her an 8th sneak attack die. At level 17, Ember will begin taking levels in the Stigmatized Witch archetype again. I continue allocating Ember's skill points into Trickery, Persuasion, and Perception. And then take the Metamagic Quicken Spell feat. Uh, healing for Ember's Hex. And Cure Serious Wounds Mass as Ember Spell. 
At level 19, we're going to take the Chain Lightning and Mind Blink spells. I know that there are a lot of enemies that are immune to lightning or electricity, but against the ones that are not, this should be pretty effective thanks to the Surprise Spells ability that lets us add pre bleh, precision damage to it. Also, there isn't really much uh, left at this spell level that is helpful for helpful for our build that uh, will not be covered by other party members. Mind Blink is a very helpful buff that should definitely be um, active on all of your party members with low will saves. At level 19, Ember should take Great Fortitude as her feet, a fortune for her hex, and Mind Blank Communal as her spell. I know that we just took Mind Blank, but taking this will save a whole load of spell slots, and our main focus for Ember at this point is maximizing spell slots to increase her damage and healing contribution to the party. If you do not have another party member capable of casting Heroic Invocation, uh, then you might take that here instead of Mind Blink Communal. Finally, at level 20, we're going to put Ember's last ability point into Charisma. Ooh, let's go back here and look at uh, Ember's skill points. Her final skill point allocation should look just like this. Okay, and we're going to take Summon Monster 8 and Cure Critical Wounds Mass for Ember's uh, last two spells. Okay. Summon Monster 8 is mostly just here uh, so that Ember can add some bodies to the fight if she needs to. Uh, more than likely you won't need the spell, but if you do, it's there. And Critical Wounds Mass, of course, uh, is for her to keep up with her healing duties. Now that we've gone through Ember's levels, let's go ahead and take a look at her Mythic Feats and Abilities. Ember's Mythic Feats are Point Blank Shot Mythic. Okay, now this will help Ember to overcome her Blackened Curse so that she can hit with attacks by giving her an additional plus two attack bonus. Uh, from using the Point Blank Shot ability. Spell Penetration Mythic, of course, increases her spell penetration, which is extremely helpful, especially since much of her damage will be coming from a level 2 spell. Mythic Sneak Attacker. This gives Ember an additional sneak attack die, bringing her total uh, to 8 in this build. Now, School Mastery Evocation, this will increase the caster levels um, of, her of her evocation spells by one. And last, we have Great Fortitude Mythic, which will greatly increase the rate at which Ember passes uh, Fortitude checks, which is very helpful because there are a great many of these, especially at the end of the game. Ember's mythic abilities are Abundant Casting, Improved Abundant Casting, Ascendant Element Fire, Greater Abundant Casting, and Favorite Metamagic Quicken. Alright, all of the Abundant Casting uh, mythic abilities together give Ember an additional 36 spell uses by the time she gains access to level 9 spells. That is incredibly powerful and definitely, definitely essential to the build. Okay, next we have Ascendant Element Fire. Uh, this ensures that Ember does full damage to enemies with Scorching Ray and Hellfire Ray and any other fire spells, um, regardless of their resistances or immunities. However, this does not bypass spell resistance, so Ember will still have to overcome that for these spells to work. And last we have Metamagic Quicken, or Favorite Metamagic Quicken, uh, which allows Ember to quicken uh, more of her spells and cast the ones that she can already quicken at a lower spell level. 
Okay. Now let's look at Ember's spellbook. I'm not going to go over all of the spells since we've basically just did that. Uh, but I do want to show you the volume of spells Ember has access to with this build. Through the use of metamagic mostly. Cycling through each spell level, you can see that Ember has plenty of spells to cast. When you get the quickened metamagic feat, Ember will be able to cast multiple uh, healing spells or damage spells uh, each turn. Now, Ember isn't meant to be the main source of damage or healing uh, for the party with this build. What she will be with this build is a strong support character that can change her role within the party to suit the needs of the party at a particular moment. And she will be very good at doing that. Now I'm going to show a quick little damage montage so you'll know what kind of damage you can expect from Ember. In the, these clips, she is level 17, mythic rank 8. And remember, she's a healer and support character first, but as you can see here, she's capable of dealing significant damage when you need her to. That's three companion builds down and only two to go along with one main character build before we get to the full party build that I'm planning. Anyways, I hope that this healing trickster witch build for Ember helps you out in your playthrough. Let the community know how you like to build Ember in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe while you are there. This has been Chris with Lorespire. Be well, my friends.